so it's round two. Um, this is the second uh, round two matchup that I'm casting. This is on 16 bit, and it is Waffle Master playing Zerg this time um, up against uh, SB Moss up in the uh, top right plane as Protoss. So 16 bit is uh, a map, um, as I mentioned before, that has got this expand at the back of your main base. Uh, which makes that area, you know, you can expand into there and it's very, very easy to defend. Um, so it's almost like it's a free expansion. You get to expand in here and anything that's going to attack that has to come through your main base. So any sort of defensive structures you've got, any sort of defensive stance you take at the top of your main ramp also protects this. Um, like obviously, it is vulnerable to things like drops, it's vulnerable to things like air. Um, but in general, this is a map that lends itself very well to a sort of macro-oriented game. Uh, it's very, very easy to get up to three bases. The fourth base is also pretty easy to hold. So um, you can get up on four bases pretty quickly on this map. And it's not until the fifth base that you really start to have to spread your units out in order to defend. So um, we'll be interested to see uh, whether or not these players sort of abuse that whether or not they take advantage of that uh, where uh, you know coming up at the sort of time when i would expect the zerg to have a hatchery done by now to be honest um so no sign of that happening we uh, as as you can see george uh, sb moss is getting in here to have a quick scout um and and sees all that he needs to see sees this gas um so what, what do you take from that if you scout uh, you go in I don't know if he would have clicked on that and seen the Evo um, not sure whether he does know that that's what that is or not but you see the gas being mined from you expect speedlings basically you expect that there's going to be uh, this speed upgrade is going to happen pretty sharpish because uh, why else is this getting such early gas the Evo chamber is a little unusual uh, but it, it you, well, certainly before a hatchery it is uh, but I don't mind an early Evo chamber um, a plus one plus one carapace uh, adds a lot of value to your units as Zerg so nothing wrong with that whatsoever uh, there is a forge bay built at home for our Protoss player so I just I, I wouldn't mind seeing this uh, worker just drop uh, a pylon in in this area and um, if you know that your workers your opponent has expanded here um, Buildings, hatcheries, while they're being built, don't have a very long range of vision. So, see if I if I just look from Waffle Master's point of view, he can't see this area. That worker can actually sneak all the way around here, and you can build a cannon right here that is within range of this hatchery. And before the hatchery finishes up, it doesn't see the cannon. Um, so. You know, it is quite straightforward to, it's not really a cannon rush per se, it's just an obnoxious cannon. Uh, you can get a lot of value from just a, a well-placed cannon that's tucked in behind the minerals so that lings can't get a surround on it. Um, it can just be really awkward. Uh, if you if you want to be super sly, you build a pylon cannon and a pylon on the other side of it as well so that uh, the lings can't actually get to the cannon. At, at all or if they can, only one ling at a time can get in there. Um, and that cannon can be a real problem. Anyway, with all that said, it, it isn't what's happening here. Um, in Protoss land, uh, there's a couple of zealots building. The side court is finished. No gateway research happening just yet. Uh, we have got this this worker, I think, is just been transferred to gas, was just chilling there for a second. So uh, we've got reasonable gas income now up for the Protoss player. This cannon is going to finish up and is going to push this overlord away, but it isn't going to have to go far. It can just wander over here. There's, there's no uh, stalker out just yet that can um, shoot this, but there's a reasonable number of zealots on the map. Uh, so Espimo is presumably seeing the early cast, expecting speedlings, and here are the speedlings. Um, has has built plenty of zealots to see this off. Uh, but Waffle Master, of course, has scouted pretty effectively himself, has seen all that there is to see inside the Protoss men. So he knows that these zealots are right. So you know you don't want to be trying to get anything done with these links uh, with, with that many zealots on the map. Um, cause, cause they're just not going to achieve. Uh, zealots are, are very, very good against links because they're basically like um, really big links that hit harder and take much more uh, tanking as well. Uh, but the links do find their way into the mineral line, so a little bit careless to let these guys in um, uh, and do get a tiny amount of damage down there. There's certainly a couple of workers falling. Uh, if you're Waffle Master, what you wanted to do once the links were in the mineral line 
is make sure you are right clicking these workers one at a time to make sure that you're killing workers because you, you're not going to fare well against the zealots there's no point trying to kill a zealot because you just use all the link you'll lose all the links and you probably only do shield damage um, so you can see like three workers there uh, killed isn't too bad at this early stage of the game uh, expect oh this roach well, what's he doing there uh, Get out of there, dude. Uh, are your mates going to come and help, or is this roach just going to take down a stalker for free? No, I don't think so. Um, does, it roach, does a roach take down a stalker? I don't think it does. I think a stalker takes out a roach. I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell from that because that wasn't a fair fight. Um, uh, yeah, I think a stalker takes out a roach, though. It's going to be pretty close. Um, anyway. The Overlord uh, gets dispatched. Um, what I'm a little surprised by is that the Protoss here doesn't have an expand. Uh, we see four gets up, um, you know, but at this sort of, it's getting relatively lit for any sort of four get aggression. Um, so I'm a little bit curious as to why there isn't a Nexus being built. Uh, the Robo is in production and that is all good, but you know, look, work, worker production has stopped. Um, so if you stop worker production at one base, you're committing to a one base all in. Um, and if you are doing a one base all in, well, you need to have left your base by two minutes ago, really, don't you? Uh, so, um, SB must needs to be careful here because Waffle Master is, is up on, uh, you know, two hatches uh, complete, and the third one being built. Uh, you don't want to let the Zerg get carried away uh, with a ridiculous income. Now, with that said, you know, there's no drones being built. The men isn't saturated, and there's only three drones mining here. So actually, the income tab uh, is, is not particularly unbalanced it's, it's not that dissimilar and, and the gas income is significantly better for the protoss player so uh, the gateway here on the other side of the map next to the pylon is uh, useful uh, because 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 when you're warping in units uh, they warp in twice as fast if there is uh, a gateway being being powered by a warp gate rather being powered by the pylon um, if there isn't they're much slower to warp in so this is a kind of sign that we would expect there to be a lot of aggression coming surely these links don't get in they do and again that's a little bit careless to let them get in you don't want these guys in your mineral line you, you really don't um, and again you know a little bit more worker kills uh, but I'd like to have seen the links focused on the workers um, and literally just go for worker kills because that, that is definitely the way forward. So only two worker kills and all the links killed. Um, but, but really, SP Moss, you shouldn't have let them in. Uh, you know, you've got plenty of units here. Uh, in general, against Zerg, you know, you put a couple of buildings so that you can block the top of the ramp with one or maybe two units. Uh, but even in the absence of that, like Zealots on hold command here, if you move these units just into the middle of the ramp and have them on hold command, the links, the links can't get past them. If they're not on hold command, uh, they'll reposition themselves to attack the links and the links will quite often find a gap. So three bases up for Waffle Master, uh, four drones in production, but you know, these idle larvae are, are concerning me. There's a lot of money in the bank. There's no reason to have idle larvae. Uh, there, there's no reason for that at all. Um, if you've got the money, spend it. You, you know, uh, we've said this before, that you don't get, you don't win any awards in StarCraft for having a large bank. Uh, that's a totally different game. So uh, it, the, the game is very much about spending money, uh, getting as much money as you can and spending it as quickly as you can. So I want to see, I want to see these larvae being used. I mean, there's a Benling nest coming. Uh, the observer is going to come in and have a good old look around the Protoss men. Let's see what that looks like for a Waffle Master. So, you know, this uh, observer, there it is. Hard to see, isn't it? against the creep background. Easier to see when they're moving, there he goes. Uh, but when they're stationary against a, a creep background, they are actually very hard to see. Um, they are a little bit easier to see if your graphics settings are on low. And uh, I know some players do play deliberately with the graphics settings turned on uh, to make things like observers uh, that little bit easier to see. So SB must gets in, has a good look. Uh, and this is what he sees. He sees that there's a roach warren. He sees, well, he knew that anyway, he's seen roaches. He sees that there's Evo and he sees that the lair is on its way. Um, Waffle Master, meantime, 
you know, still this production tab is, is very, very empty. I, I, I don't know, man, I don't know what these guys are at. Uh, you know, there's a lot of money building up. There's idle warp gates here on the other side of the map. There's an idle forge. Um, you know, did we build this forge just for this one cannon? Get these upgrades going, you've got the money to do it. Uh, so, you know, you know, get, get, get busy with this sort of stuff, get busy. Um, Right, SB Mice beginning to, to look like he wants to do something aggressive. I do like this. I like the uh, the Ninja Expo tucked up here in the, the left corner here. Um, you know, if Protoss units get to this this watchtower, that'll give them vision of this region. Um, and I'm just wondering whether the vision that this gives would see the edge of the creep. How far is the creep going to get to about there? I don't think it will. I, I don't think it will. But... Um, yeah, I like it. I, I like this, you know, 16 bits are a big old map. It, it's pretty straightforward to hide an expo. Um, yeah, if I'm SB Moss, I'm coming in, I'm seeing this, uh, I'd be just a bit confused that there aren't more workers here. I'd be thinking like, hang on, is this expand only just gone down? No, it's been here for ages. Why, why aren't there more workers? Uh, we're in danger of this creep actually seeing this stuff here. So there's an awful lot of, um, I don't know, there seems, seems to be a lot of waiting in this game. Both players just kind of waiting for something to happen, you know. I'm not, not going to bother building anything. I'm just going to sit and chill. Uh, and here, something is going to happen. So, uh, our protest player steps out onto the creep. Uh, if you've got the observer with you, it is well worth killing these creep tumors. Uh, but let's see how this fight goes. Uh, I don't think there's any upgrades. Oh, sorry, there is plus one carapace for the Zerg. This is a lot of Protoss. Uh, these corrosive bars uh, need to be used because Ravagers are good like that. So get these corrosive bars up and, and see if we can take down some of these stalkers. The Queens are doing a, a reasonable amount of damage up there. Uh, the sick roaches in production are they going to come out in time to save this i'm not sure there's still a lot of protoss standing strong and these zealots uh, that that kind of next raft of zealots that turned up are, are going to hand uh, the roaches need to be a bit micro you can't you don't want the roaches to be taking hits from the zealots you need to micro them back onto the high ground here you need to join forces with the other roaches that you've got in your men you need to pull the queens and all of that stuff needs to happen right now otherwise you're going to die here um so the, this hatchery is for profit by the looks of things. Um, and SP Mars has got a, a reasonable army lead, but it um, is everything here? It doesn't look like 37 army supply. Uh, maybe, maybe there's some stuff at home. I don't know. Um, so it does look like the Zerg player is, is going to clean this up eventually. The Ling's nibbling away here. Um, only three stalkers left. Uh, and there's three more roaches in production, but you know, if I find idle lar larvae here, and I do, three larvae doing nothing, um, that, that just worries me. You know, you've got an enemy army in your face. If ever there was a time you needed to be building stuff, it is right now, and, and you've still got idle larvae. Um, like, is it a mistake or something? I don't even know. All right, so these roaches better not walk to their death. Uh, the queens can help a lot here. They've got a lot of energy. These are full energy queens. So transfuses is gonna be the key to this. The queens can transfuse uh, several times here. So you want, the, you want to get these transfuses off and keep these units alive if you can. But look, the production tab is still empty. I, I just don't get it. I don't get how your production tab's empty when, when your, your enemy is knocking at the door. Uh, um, and even that doesn't prompt you to build some units, turn the larva into units, please, for heaven's sake. Um, SB Moss, having pushed this far, decides to just stop for a bit of a rest. Uh, there is a Colossus in production. Let's see, where is where is the Colossus in production? Yeah, he's coming from all the way over there. Um, the, ah, three Immortals, look. Now, Immortals are fantastic against roaches, so, you know, get get them up, get them involved in the fight if you know your opponent has got roaches. Immortals are, are wonderful against roaches. They, they do uh, all sorts of damage. Uh, Lings are the answers to Immortals, but unfortunately there's enough zealots here as well. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be a counter-attack that he's got in mind. I just, I don't think that's enough Lings to, to do the damage. He, he's pulled the workers, um, and it, this is going to be ugly. Uh, these roaches are, are just going to take a pissed in as they try and file past. This, this isn't this isn't good to watch, is it? You know, this is this is hurting my eyes. Um, these guys, I don't know what this fella's doing. Spine crawler, he's got nowhere to go. You know, you need creep to plant the spine crawler on, and there's no creep over here. Um, so there's Protoss all up in the Zerg main base. There, there's plenty of humans at home. Look at the Colossus; he's just kind of 
absolutely end and any sort of aggression from this sensor counter-attack in, in, in short order. So I fear that the army supply is woefully unbalanced at this stage. Um, I don't know whether Waffle Master is going to cling on here with this uh, sort of hidden base in the corner. He has built a new spawning pool, which would kind of suggest to me that yes, he does intend um, to not, not go gracefully, but rather to salt his way out of the game. Um, so the bending nest uh, here has been up for some time, but I don't remember seeing any bendings in this game. And bendings are quite good against zealots. Um, that you know, not bad to have a couple of bendings in the mix because lings themselves do extremely well against stalkers, but terribly against zealots. Uh, so what you want is a couple of bendings up at the front to, to hit the zealots and soften them up, uh, and then you get the lings around, and you can actually you can do quite a lot. Um, these lings that are running about the place, yeah, it hasn't gone too well now. Uh, oh, there's the GG. Okay. Um, yeah, so a bit, a bit slow really from both players. Um, both kind of taking their time to to to, to get up uh, to a point where they were ready to push out onto the map. Um, and neither, you know, given that they they both took their time to to be aggressive, uh, neither of them really uh, powered up economically either. You know, SB Mouse never took the the sort of expand at the front here. Um, and yeah, okay, the Zerg player did, did have all three bases taken, but they were never saturated. There was never a substantial income. Um, not really. So, you know, a bit uh, funny game, really. A bit funny. But anyway, it is 1-0 uh, to SB Mouse. Um, so without further ado, I think I'll crack on with game two.